car from Rotodyne. Take off clearance, please. Rotodyne from tower, you're clear to go. Roger. Rotodyne taking off now. For up-to-date travel, the ferry Rotodyne will revolutionise medium-range air transport flying direct from city centre to city centre. All this, remember, coupled with the ability to take off and land vertically on a site little bigger than the aircraft itself. Now let's examine some of the constructional details. The airframe is of conventional stressed skin construction, a notable feature being the large unobstructed fuselage. The rotor head is built almost entirely of steel. These are the flapping hinges, the feathering bearings and pitch change levers. No drag hinges are necessary in this design. And these are the air ducts which pass compressed air through the centre of the head to the blades. This eliminates all mechanical transmission. The blades also are constructed almost entirely of steel. Stainless steel sheet is wrapped around ribs through which pass three light steel ducts taking compressed air to the blade tips. The tip jet units are developed entirely by ferry. Notice the essential simplicity of the unit shown here with one of our earlier flight tested silencers. After manufacture at the Hayes and Stockport factories, the main aircraft components were sent to the company's airfield at White Waltham near Maidenhead for final assembly. In this hangar, the aircraft took shape and the main sub-assemblies were bolted together. The wing may be regarded as the main structural element. The fuselage, while obviously an integral part of the aircraft, can be changed at the design stage and made available for special duties without affecting the lifting surfaces or power installation. The fuselage, nacelle and pylon are each attached with four high tensile bolts to the wing. The pylon fairing contains hydraulic and other accessories, all easily maintained. The prototype is fitted with Napier Eland engines. The production version will be bigger and faster and will be powered by Rolls-Royce Tyne engines. The rotor head is assembled as a complete unit and is thus easily installed in the aircraft. Both head and blades have been designed for long life and the all-steel construction is expected to give a life at least as long as that of the airframe. Overhauls will be infrequent. Blade assembly is easy. The blades are bolted to the inner spars and fuel and electrical connections made good. The design was preceded by a great deal of test work. More than 840 hours of wind tunnel testing were completed, including tests on airframe with rotor. For convenience of drive, the rotor is in aerodynamic connection only. Many fatigue tests were carried out on airframe and rotor components, such as this destruction test on a blade root. All rotary wing aircraft must face the ground resonance problem. To overcome it, Ferries prepared an elegant mathematical analysis which formulates the problem precisely. The theoretical results were confirmed on a dynamic model which reproduces stiffness and inertia of the complete aircraft. In addition, impedance tests were carried out at White Waltham to check the elastic properties of the full-scale aircraft. Static rigs and these single blade rotating rigs were used to develop the tip jet units. An essential adjunct to the tip jet is the development of silencers. 
a large array has been tested. With the fully developed units, the rotodyne will be completely acceptable from the point of view of external noise. The cockpit itself incorporates normal helicopter controls and offers an exceptionally good outside view. In the fuselage, auto observers and a test crew monitor all instruments. The prototype instrumentation is comprehensive. The biggest test facility covers the complete power installation, including rotor and flying controls. This rig at Boscombe Down finally proved the integrity of the dynamic components and also enabled the pilot to familiarize himself with control manipulation and power response. Designing a different type of aircraft introduces new problems, but finally the rotodyne was ready for pre-flight checks and ground resonance trials. Notice how precisely the pilot can control the rotor, lifting the nose wheel inches off the ground. And so, with trouble-free tests complete, came the first takeoff in November 1957. Control was excellent. For these first flights, the aircraft operated with a very stiff, non-retracting undercarriage. The first flight was planned to consist only of hovering trials. In fact, the pilot was so pleased with the way the aircraft handled that he completed a circuit of the airfield on the first day. Then he attempted a mere 35 miles an hour. And for the first 69 flights, the aircraft was flown as a pure helicopter with power on the rotor. After this successful stage, the transition to autogyro was completed and a further 105 flights were carried out, during which period the handling, stability and rotor stresses were investigated. This work culminated in the Rotodyne setting up a new world speed record of 191 miles an hour in cruising conditions. This is far in excess of the top speed of conventional helicopters. Yet the Rotodyne retains all the advantages of vertical takeoff. A payload of up to 70 passengers or 18,000 pounds of freight can be carried in complete safety and in all weathers. Even in the event of failure of one engine, the aircraft can continue its flight to the most exacting requirements of the civil air authorities. For landing, the tip jets are relit. Any port from Rotodyne, joining for landing. Transition completed. Roger, Rotodyne, you're clear to land. Surface wind 270, 22 knots. The Rotodyne is a bold design concept with accent on safety, reliability and easy maintenance. The vertical takeoff capability is achieved not by radical departure but as a logical development of existing helicopter experience. The ferry Rotodyne is the aircraft for fast economical travel, offering the advantages of air transport to everyone, everywhere.